Alrighty, I think we are good to get this going. Hello everyone, my name is Elvin, also known as Epoxy. It is 2 p.m. here on March 9th here at Chicago, and we have got some league games to cast today and this afternoon. Uh, today's match is going to be featuring our Illinois Tech League of Legends Division 3 team. We are now uh, watching them as they progress through the Collegiate Star League um jv2 playoff stage and so um they've been playing games throughout the fall season and the winter um to pretty much come up to this where it's now a uh, single elimination uh double elimination i think actually uh format where um all of the top 64 teams within their uh, league are now playing so um illinois tech division three making a strong start right now with um two and oh in their uh in their belt, I believe. Um, doing a quick check actually to see which schools they played. They played the uh, PCT Wildcats on the uh, Pennsylvania College of Technology round one, and then came out with that on a uh, 2 0. And then last week, most recently, uh, was against Montana State University, the Winter Whales, uh, also coming out with 2 0. So today's match we're going to be featuring um the university of tulsa uh golden hurricanes i just realized i spelled golden wrong whoops all right no harm done and yeah um a couple of things to be watching out for i think uh the division three team they told me today that they were actually going to be running a sub uh likely due to just some sort of roster issue happening out throughout but uh yeah, I don't know too much about uh their competition uh today, but I guess I can check it out as we uh wait to get ourselves into the uh pick band phase, taking a look at this University of Tulsa. Uh So it seems in the fall season they went uh 4 and 3 with a couple of wins all over the map. And then in the spring, now they've beaten uh, two schools on their side, University of South Florida and Seton Hall. So uh, once we get started um, during the delay, I guess we'll do a little bit of a uh, description about all of the players from IIT side. But until then, uh, I think we're just waiting to get ourselves rolling. Looks like TU has a coach or spectator also on their side. Uh, taking a look at the competition, looks pretty uh, even all throughout. I mean, uh, you got a couple of, uh, you got two golds here at IIT, three silvers, uh, two golds, three silvers. So, like I said, going to be an exciting game to see who's going to be coming out on top where the dominance is going to be shown. And uh, I know that the ranks right now, uh, at least within the upper ELO, like the Diamond Masters tier, there's been a lot of uh, speculation going on as of recent. Riot's finally kind of caved in a little bit and decided to start rolling back the... Uh, positional rank and are kind of resetting ranked a little bit for that upper tier but i don't think that's too much of an effect here with these uh jv2 matches i don't actually even i guess i can look up a little bit more about university of tulsa don't know too much about them uh private university in oklahoma and then uh, their mascot is called Captain Kane. Interesting. All right, all right, there we go. So starting to get ourselves now into the uh, pick band phase. Gonna see what's gonna be coming out. So IIT game one, looks like they will be on the blue side. And then uh, keeping our eyes on uh, the first band, we've got Dinar coming out, so they're going to be focused here on uh, TU's Bubble Buddy here in the top lane. Uh, we got the Mordekaiser band, of all things. Uh, 
Now that's interesting because I'm used to seeing the Mordekaiser Band in our Division One games from uh, Nightwind Forty Two, who's IIT's top laner. But uh, seeing it here, that's interesting. Uh, maybe J Mars has been practicing that out. Uh, I believe everyone's in their uh, like positions. So J Mars top, Vulcan Mittens jungle, Bobby mid, Pirate Windows ADC, Pylades, Plelates in uh, support. We got the cat band going to be focused on mid here for holly baby uh the evelyn taken out here for jungle for vulcan uh seems to be a target ban i uh not too sure what the uh idea will be moving on one more band here for iit will be the jacks and that's uh likely looking at another top lane um focus i i believe TU Bubble Buddy was uh, showing off one of the higher ranks within the uh, Tulsa side. So, uh, last ban for Tulsa here going to be the Darius, and that's going to be targeted toward J Mars. So, looks like uh, two top laners for both sides uh, taken out from the get go. So, going to be trying to see uh, what the first picks will be now. Uh, J Mars is going to be going for the Yorick, the Grave Digger. So, that's going to be. Uh, Definitely an impressive lane if he's able to pick up momentum. The Tristana pick coming out now for... Uh... Tulsa, uh, that's going to be for Foxy Grandpa in the bot lane. Elise uh, going to be here picked for TU Jace. So now back on IIT side, uh, we're hovering the cane currently. Um, that's going to be locked in, and that's uh, interesting to see. Uh, that's definitely uh, a lot of opportunity to gank to help out his side lanes out a bit in the mid lane, of course. But uh, Sivir going to be here for IIT as well. Uh, that's going to be focused on the bot lane, and interesting to see, you know, Sivir's uh, traditionally always been one of those more passive uh, ADCs, in my opinion, but really focused on the wave clearing and split pushing and whatnot, but uh, no supports being picked for either side yet, so depending on what they pick, if like it's a hook champion or something, her spell shield will definitely come in handy. Maybe IIT did that research ahead of time to kind of get that out of the map, they having the feeling that the TU Grubsters will be looking at that. Uh, meanwhile, here for Tulsa, now as we go on to the second round of bands, we've got the uh, Thresh coming out. Uh, Thresh getting banned, so that's going to be focused towards Plelades. One, two bands here now left on IIT side. Uh, only rules are left are really the support and the uh, top lane, I guess. So IIT's chosen instead to leave their support and mid lane open, likely trying to see if they can save out. Uh, Try to see if they can predict anything from that Ari. Uh, prepare for that. The Morgana ban coming out here, and so uh, something to keep in mind for sure is um, recently the uh, new updates to the champs. Uh, both Kale and Morgana have been placed into effect now onto uh, onto the game. So uh, Kale is considered a uh, like a new champ, so she is actually ineligible, I believe, for both um, CSL and for like collegiate lol right now. Uh, Morgana, however, her unique situation is that she is not. Um, hers is more of kind of like a. There's a term for it, it's like a rework or something. But uh, we're gonna be currently taken back into the lobby. It looks like someone left. Not sure what the issue was. Not sure uh, what's happening as of right now, but hopefully we get some news to figure that out. Um, but I think I saw the Braum being locked in there on um, TU Grubsters, and that's going to be definitely helpful uh, in the bot lane with Tristana. If he gets one of his Q stacks on there, Tristana can jump right in. Sivir with her spell shield can stop it, but it's you know it's all about reaction time for that. If the Braum jumps right into her face and she has to instantly react or something. Uh, yeah, currently kind of in the dark right now. Not sure what the intent is with uh, 
with that, I'm not sure if that was a placement pick being used and they're just going to start reordering themselves. I don't I don't think they had finished off their picks yet, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. I guess while we wait for that in the lobby screen, I'm going to go mess around a little bit with in-game screen. I know that we have a new opponent, so I got to change that logo up a bit. Uh, so... Always got something to do. Streaming. League. Tulsa. Alright, I believe that this is Tulsa's logo. I don't know if they have a specific esports logo. I spent like five minutes on Google trying to find something out there. Didn't really come up with anything though. So, um, Tulsa, if there's any viewers or afterwards, uh, feel free to send me something. I guess we can try to see if we can incorporate the logo into our thumbnail or something. But for now, for the duration of this stream, we're going to be using that one. I'm jumping back to our pick band phase window, though. Uh, yeah, still kind of waiting for what's what's happening on the uh, IIT side. Maybe uh, I'll message him. He'll message me if something's up. Getting a quick message that <laughs> Vulcan apparently had his computer crash, and that's always unfortunate to see. Um, hopefully, uh, Tulsa is going to be understanding about that. You know, these kind of things happen in collegiate, so uh, unlucky. That's a good word for that. But yeah, um, I guess while we wait, we can talk a little bit about the League of Legends scene that's going on at IIT right now. So, uh, no worries. Yeah, let me pull up how uh, everyone's been doing so far. Yeah, right now we're just waiting for the uh, last guy to come in, but until we do, uh, I actually pulled up a quick screen of um, our Division 1 team, and so this uh, Division 1 team participated in the 2019 uh, North Conference here uh, for C-Law, and so the way that C-Law works for the Division 1 teams is that they split it up into... Uh, Four, four regions and then a bunch of different conferences. So you've got Northeast, Southwest, and then there's the Big Ten, the Peach Belt and whatnot. So uh, this year, I think it uh, looks like 82 teams were uh, in this season. And so the Scarlet Hawks, though, in the end, ended up placing 23rd. So finishing the record with four and two to their name. Uh, you know, definitely, definitely impressive. Um, I think this is the first year that Illinois Tech has broken out of the 3-3 three, three, uh, threshold that we've always seemed to be consistent on. Uh, we've, this is now the third year, I believe, that the, the, the that we've uh, been able to submit a team for this kind of stuff. Um, so 4-2, putting them on 23. Uh, I can do the math for that with the calculator. 23, got it. 82, putting them in the top 30%. There you go, 28% of teams out there. Um, 
but yeah, some of the uh, it was definitely really unfortunate uh, this season. Apparently, one of the losses that they faced uh, was against uh, Kent State, and so for a little bit of clarification, the way that that works is that um, in order for teams to get out of the group stage, you have to be able to score a five uh, one record or higher. So Illinois Tech being four and two just makes it shy of the uh, of that cut this year but looking at that you've got only 10 schools here from the north that were able to move on miami columbia case rmu maryville kansas state uh akron wesleyan washington st louis st ambrose and grandview and definitely a good amount of these schools uh, have their own uh, esports programs so that is to be expected with that level of talent coming in to be able to rise up to the occasion um Illinois Tech still, we don't currently have a scholarship program as of yet, but uh, looking into it, you know, so uh, going to have to see if uh, in the future, if the rosters changes and the new talent that's going to be coming into our university is going to be changing anything up and maybe for the better to finally get Illinois Tech there onto the map to get past that group stage. But uh, that's how our... Division one team ended up doing this year. I don't know if they show off stats. I don't think they show off individual stats. But uh, sometimes the Battle 5 site will show off a bunch of cool things for people to see. Top pick champion, Scion, Braum, Lucian, all of that meta stuff right here. A couple of pie charts there. Nothing too exciting. Uh, and then we can look at our... Division two. And so for them, yeah, this is the round of 32 for them, but taking a quick look at their history. Uh, yeah, starting off into the fall, they uh, ended up facing a bunch of different schools starting off this regular season strong with a uh, five and one one two three four four and two excuse me losing against Treen and Columbia Renegades it looks like uh, and then for their playoffs they made it all the way as far against uh, LCS bound which I believe was Stony Brook University losing that out on uh, oh and two with a pretty uh, stacked roster that they had almost all golds I think entirely so uh, hopefully they don't run into each other again as they are now into the spring playoff stage, but we already went over the uh, what's going on on that end uh, for how they're doing in the playoffs, but looking like we're still waiting for Vulcan Mittens to join. So I guess until then, we could probably just take a quick break since uh, we don't have too much to talk about now that we've kind of gone over how the progress of everyone's doing and not too much to speculate besides just the picks and bans. Mm, maybe not, looking like Vulcan just finally got on into the invite. Hoping that someone kept track of the uh, picks because that'll be really unfortunate. Here's hoping. I don't think uh, Tulsa will be that generous next time if uh, <laughs> another error like that occurs. Um, but yeah, keeping ourselves in mind, I think we saw the Yorick um, pick, we saw the Sivir pick, we saw the Kane pick for IIT. Um, and then uh, on Tulsa's side, we had the uh, Elise, we had Tristana, and we had Ari, and I think Braum was being hovered by Foxy Grandpa. Not sure if they're going to confirm themselves with that, but yeah, going over, over our bands, IIT went with Nar, Katarina, and Jax. Uh, Tulsa went with Mordekaiser, Darius, and Evelyn, I believe. So, you know, thankfully, here's the thing about disconnects like, if it ever happens in game. You know, Vulcan Mintens is in the jungle, so unless you have like a super aggro jungler enemy that's opponent that's gonna like always invade your jungler, no one will know if you're not there, you know? Could just be, oh, I'm just taking my sweet time farming. 
<laughs> but in lane, if you just got a guy standing stock still, especially in the bot lane, it's like one of the most frustrating things to deal with. It's like, no, please don't get hooked by a Blitzcrank or something. Um, but hopefully we get ourselves moving along here as we uh, get the uh, picks rolling along. Come on, IIT. You know what you're doing. Yeah, I think we were talking about the uh, Morganic Kale before we got the uh, interruption. Oh, so it was the Alistar ban for IIT. Vagar going to be picked here for Pirate Windows there for Bobby. Um, but yeah, with Morgana, her update, I think only thing that changed, or one of the things that changed anyway, I don't know if it's comprehensive, it's that uh, her ultimate, once you ch uh, start channeling it, you gain a little bit of movement speed, 5%, so that'll help you... Uh, you know, get yourself right into the team, keep up to pace with them if they try to flash out or something like that. But, uh, Kale, her, in her own, it's like her, all of her abilities are freaking just out of the completely different context than uh, what her old kit used to be. And so Riot went kind of to full works with the skins. I could swear to voice lines, but I was playing Morgana yesterday and her bride skin. <laughs> when she's running, her face looks so freaking weird. Uh, if someone's if, if someone plays Morgana, you'll see what I mean. It's like just like running with like her face, her mouth open, like smiling. It's weird. Um, but uh, enough of that. We got the uh, final picks coming in here now. Um, that was the Lulu and Vagar being used. So uh, Lulu bot lane to support out that Deceiver is definitely helpful to just add on a little bit of harass not give just Trist tristana a hard time um followed up with the brom and the irelia uh, as the two picks there on the second phase for tulsa and irelia broken as i i don't i'm hoping iit is going to be prepared for that uh the brom here though for uh, tulsa is you know again uh really good with Tristana if they jump in together and he's able to get that Q stack, but all it all kind of depends on how IIT plays it. So the 2v2 matchup definitely uh, potential for harass on IIT side and then like kind of like a uh, strong initiation from Tristana Brom. But we're going to be taking ourselves now into the, uh, the three minute spectate delay. So um, I guess we could talk a little bit with what we know about how the game pacing will go. So uh likely you know iit is gonna have a really strong late game if the vagar you know vagar gets ahead that's great but 40 minute vagar after farming for that long with all that cs and his q building up as it kind of skills up his ap along with it it's going to be really deadly no matter who you're facing and tulsa on their hand they only got you know they got three squishies with the elise ari and tristana and uh it's all kind of i really i and brahm have that uh initiation potential but iit is going to be important to try to see if they can kite themselves out of it they've got the lulu you know so she can uh transmogrify or whatever her uh with her w on an enemy champ to uh kind of take them out of the fight temporarily that would be definitely useful for uh for her on a on a solo i really that got really fed and iit might be able to cc or burst her down quickly enough um Keeping our eyes on the Sivir, yeah, the, the late game, the wave clear potential, you know, it's going to definitely prevent any kind of strong siegings that uh, 
Tolson might be looking at. And then uh, the Kane, you know, early game, he's there to help out for the ganks. He's definitely a presence that you have to keep himself in mind, especially for people that might be selfishly pushing up lane. Elise is kind of on the same end too. She's got her web shot that can uh, get that CC and do a bunch of burst AP damage as well. Um, Yorick himself, I, I guess they got two cages. You got the Vagar E cage and then you got the Yorick wall thing that can keep them in place. So a lot of little bit of CC pockets that IIT's got at their disposal. And that's going to be, again, uh, IIT going to have to look out to kind of outplay themselves, take those extended fights. Whereas I Tulsa probably has just that kind of strong initiation that IIT will have to do to survive. Um, Ari, you know, she's got her ult for initiation, but if IIT is able to play it carefully, you know, Sivir might be able to spell shield it uh, and whatnot to kind of protect themselves out from that. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how the game's going to ebb and flow between not just within the lane matchups, but then eventually maybe if we get to that point of the late slash mid game phase of where those items and where that AP, you know, on Vagar and whatnot has going to be built itself up. Uh, taking a quick look at the summoners, we got three ignites coming out from Tulsa, so they're just looking to go super ham early game. And again, that's speaking for IIT to just make sure that they have that discipline to uh, hold themselves out uh, for that. The uh, cleanse here for Vega are going to be for that Ari Charm likely to teleport from Yorick, also going to help things out a bit. Uh, we're going to transition now into this playing field and... Uh... Get ourselves into the game shortly enough. Oh, look at that. All right, you can do that. So uh, showing off all those masteries, you got that Elise. Oh man, she's got 20K plus. You got Kane with 300 points. All right, so they're just starting that. Uh, looks like um, Tulsa has had these accounts for a while, so they're 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 happy to play with this. Uh, they're happy to be playing. Looks like they're on a lot of comfort picks. IIT though, you got uh, J Mars on that York, and he's got a nice rack up there um, up with a lot of points there. Actually, no. Uh, excuse me. The Foxy Grandpa here looking like she has the most mastery points to her name, 154k in that. Got the skin to help it out. Tulsa with 4 out of 5 skins. IIT with 1 skin. So, uh, looking on IIT slacking a little bit on that skin game. And maybe we'll have to uh, look into funding some stuff for them to uh, make sure they look a little bit more flashy on the Rift uh, as they get those games going. But taking, uh, I think only thing else to address would be the uh, the rooms, Guardian on Brom, of course, uh, Fleet Footwork. Uh, interesting, Glacial Augment. That's fascinating. Uh, I'm not familiar with how that works on Ari or if that's uh, intentional, but definitely uh, if people are in chat watching this, give me some feedback about how that works because I got, I don't have the darndest clue. Alrighty, so, yep, now getting ourselves into game one, gate's about to fall down now, IIT versus University of Tulsa IIT here in the blue side, round three of the CSL JV2 spring playoffs, so, uh, IIT, both of these teams go in 2-0 uh, on their respective rounds there, so they got to make sure that they kind of show on who's on top, and when you ever, whenever you get to like these round three, round fours, uh, out of these huge brackets, that's when it starts getting interesting. Uh, that's when the teams start to be facing up against each other in terms of same skill set. And I think as we saw, uh, there's a good spread of gold and silvers on both sides. So as long as no one's smurfing on an account, it should be a good game. Uh, all of IIT's members here spread across the map. Good for them to keep it themselves of watching. I really am not going for the top tribush, but uh, that should be okay. Uh, everyone's pretty much kind of together, but 
bot lane's going to be going here all the way down to lane, keeping themselves, uh, seeing if they're going to be uh, going for any sneak attacks. But IIT Sivir here in the tripod, she's going to be keeping that in mind for any potential cheese. A uh, couple of, ex I don't think any exchanges happened, but uh, red buff going to be started here for at least with uh, really just health. Kane, uh, look going to be taking things a little bit slower so that's going to be important iit did not put any wards though as uh, something to keep in mind so that's going to be if elise is going to be looking for any kind of initial ganks or uh or something like of the sort she's uh not going to be caught out by iit yorick though putting a ward there in case of any elise like level two early early kills keeping that himself in mind uh bot lane themselves taking it slow looking like they uh looking like uh, pirate windows is going to get the CS on his own. Tristan already starting to do a little bit of an early push. Um, and so, looking like she's doing all right on her own. Vagar gonna be starting off with his Q, getting his level two now. Got uh, already six AP to his name there. Nice. Elise gonna be finishing up the Krugs right now. She's got the bread bow. She's already used one pot. Gonna probably be looking for the scuttle or likely a gank coming up. Vagar gonna be putting that ward nice time nicely timed there to see if Elise is gonna be coming down, but she's gonna be going for the uh Scuttle. Ping's coming out from the Arya. She does know that Vagar has placed one down. Uh Vulcan Minton's gonna looking for that very close 1v1. Taking pretty close to those pretty close to those crusts as he looked like he did a uh just he's just been going through uh Raptors red buff Krugs, but I don't think he's going to be healthy enough to go all the way back to Wolves, and if he catches himself into Elise, that could also spell a little bit of trouble for him. Really hoping that Kane doesn't get caught out. Sorry. A first blood coming out here. I did not, we did not have any eyes on that. Doing a quick backup. Uh, Aurelia, both of these guys level 3, taking a lot of damage, actually. And the Ignite coming out here for J-Mars just has him instantly annihilated, and I don't think there's definitely a bit of a misplay there, unfortunately. Uh, Elise, though, she's not going to have any wards out there. The ward is going to spot her out. Uh, hopefully, the IIT's got communication on that. Uh, Vagar still doing all right on his own. He's going to actually be a little bit ahead in CS. Actually, like, already pushing out so strongly is going to not really serve that much benefit. A little bit of harass there on the Tristana from the Lulu. Good for her. Uh, she, has, she has got now her EQW, just her main three abilities on on the on the ready. Uh, Vulcan Midden's now finally tackling the blue buff on his own. I hope he's going to be able to take it down. It's actually kind of close. Does he have smite? Okay, so securing the blue buff with the smite. Might have to be looking at a back, or he's going to be having to look at this ground, but definitely going to be important that he probably has to go for a back after this, as there's not really too many resources left on the map for him. Uh, Elise um, herself uh, going to be clearing out the blue jungle. Not too much mana, so likely not any any ganks coming in. But uh, you've got the Tristana already starting to do a little bit of push her own. J Mar is looking for another 1v1, but he's going to look like he might be falling down here. A flash coming here for him, forcing J Mars to flash out as well. And that's a hard commit there. J Mars might not have enough for him to be into lane here. He's going to get continuously bullied by this Irelia. And uh, we saw two bans coming out for uh, for them. We saw the Nar ban, we saw the Jax ban. So looking like I, T, TU's top lane is going to be given a b decent amount of trouble for the Hawks. Elise is going to be roaming around there. Uh, but Kane with the back is actually going to be a little bit stronger than Elise. So if they run into each other, Kane might show up on the other upper hand. Uh, showing herself up here, though. Getting the web here, but I don't know if Vulcan Mittens is healthy enough and wants to keep fighting for it. She might try to secure with a smite. Kane will get it. The Glacial Augment helping a little bit here for Arya as they kind of meet each other face to face. But uh, I think uh, with that... Kane still is going to be showing out on top with a little bit of XP ahead. Could be wrong. No, they're they're evenly matched. I'm sorry. Uh, I really though getting a 2-0 here on York. He's going to get a little bit of shutdown gold on her, but three long swords to her name is going to be giving some problems to the Hawks. And we mentioned before, and I got to keep in mind. But Vagar with an E available, level six already committing a lot of resources to ignite. Going to be likely coming in. Going to be barely. 
uh, able to keep Vagar alive with that cleanse coming in handy last second. I didn't know you could cleanse Ignite. Cool story. Uh, Kane, though, going to be walking around a ward. He's going to be spotted out by the Elise. Uh, I don't know if Elise is going to commit to this, but her aggression is definitely, definitely uh, something to keep in mind. Going to be important for Yoro to do for him to make sure that he can still keep himself into the game enough. But I really just doesn't want to do anything. And uh, if if York falls here to three zero, that's gonna be just at this point nothing really he can do. And he's looking like he's gonna actually be facing that. As I really just goes for a quick dash in there, and that's not gonna help things out. We gonna have to be IIT likely game two gonna have to be looking at really at Ben. Don't think they can commit any more towards that with her so ahead right now. I think uh, yeah, already. Half the half the amount of gold, thirty one hundred to her name. Not going to be helping things out, unfortunately, for the Hawks. Begardo with his first back coming back with the uh, blasting wand and some boots. A uh, that'll help him out a little bit for uh, helping him clear the lane a little bit faster. Elise now just finishing up her red buff. Kane going to be. Uh, looking like we're going to have both of these junglers meet each other in the river, possibly. Um, IIT's visual control definitely lacking a little bit, though, as we don't really have much in the river. Uh, Vagar going to be showing himself right here, but he's not going to have a cleanse to get himself out. No flash either is going to look like the kill going over to TUJ, as at least now starts her self with the early game. And like we said, you know, IIT... It's gonna, it's gonna be that, it's gonna be that kind of uh, game where IIT has to try to see if they can sustain themselves for the late game. Let the Vagar build himself up to that, but if they can't match it with uh, TU's aggression, though, that's gonna be something to keep in mind. Kane definitely should not be looking for ganks on the top side. York is so behind right now. Or really with her TMS, she's just going to burst two of them, both of them in a 1v2 situation. Uh, doing a good clear on the red buff there is going to be sending that Kane a little bit behind. Not sure if he's going to be keeping that in mind, but look at these visions. One, two, three. Three wards there to keep the Hawks uh, in control. Uh, keep those Hawks placed. And I really, uh, uh, excuse me, Ari going to be landing the charm. Going to be forcing the Kane to flash out. But I think Ari's got one more in her. The flash Q coming out going to be getting that kill over. And IIT is struggling with that vision game, and another two levels here behind for the York is going to be looking like they're going to be having a hard time. And I, yeah, I don't know what to say. I think uh, J Mars is one of IIT's regular top laners, so they should be used to playing each other. The WQ landed itself to do a little bit of damage to Ari to deter her from doing anything else. At least going to be staying really hard for this. I think they're trying to bait him out, but. Uh, or looking like a dive. A dive could be deadly, and that'll set the York even further behind. But uh, he's got his ult ready. Not sure if he's going to try to force it. IIT is going to see what they can do against it to hold it out. Going to be landing every single ability as he gets instantly bursted down. Not even getting the cage up, I think, to be able to stop, keep them in place. Maybe. Um, Ward's going to spot out Kane as they know that he's going to be on the cross. Uh, the turret plating going to be getting at least two or three ticks there for uh, Tulsa there. Yeah, this I really is definitely going to be looking unstoppable if uh, this early turret falling here likely. Uh, looks like uh, both Tulsa's committing pretty hard for it. Not sure what they're going to be able to do to respond in kind. You know, show, Elise showing herself up there should give Kane the knowledge to like go for the uh, go for her blue jungle, but instead he's just going to go for the ward. Elise is going to back, and she'll probably be able to match, or not. She's just going to go greed for the blue buff. And again, IIT with York so behind, no vision here. They don't know anything that's going on here. Kane though, gonna be trying to see if he's coming around. They look like they want to fight here for the bot lane. Lulu gonna be taking really low, actually. I don't know if she has ult. One more, the cannon minion actually gonna be finishing her up and IIT committing so hard for this. The Ignite coming out. Ari here with her ghosty is gonna be able to capture them. Sivir gonna be flashing herself out, getting the Ari charm on her and well played there from Tulsa there as they're able to collapse. IIT not playing that dive successfully and that's the uh 
you need to have that game knowledge to know that when that at least is top, you need to go for these blue camps. And uh, unfortunately, IIT though. No kills to their name, no assists to their name, 9 and 0 for them. Uh, I don't know if they if IIT can try to do what, what they can do now. Uh, as the objectives are probably going to be started to be looking on as we kind of shift ourselves past this very early game. Uh, Dragon here going to be taken down here, likely after they finish up this bot turret. Uh, transitioning for that, maybe a lane switch, and then looking at that Herald is going to be kind of continuing that lead, uh, that 6k gold lead already at 11 minutes for the uh, for Tulsa. Lulu trying to do what she can, but that's going to be a lot of damage on that Ari. I don't know. Uh, they, they shouldn't be looking for the fight, but maybe they want to anyway. Yeah, keeping ourselves in mind, Irelia with now about 2.7k gold. Vagar going to try to do what he can. Going to get a nice little flash out there to avoid the Ari charm, and that'll help us especially to get the Elise to stop him from bursting. The Ghosty's coming out again, though, for Vagar, and he does not have his E available. Getting the stun, getting another charm is going to be quickly bursted down instead of walking up to lane with the cane. Um, not sure if IIT knew that was coming. I think the Elise was coming through here, so the tower should have spotted her. Unfortunately, IIT, though, bot lane trying to do what they can. Uh, the gold lead not as substantial there. 800, it's going to be enough for like a one item, but I look at Tristana's going to come back with her Infinity Edge finished, uh, Sivir with her boots finished, and it would be, uh, Braum with the Mobies, putting up that shield in place. But yeah, Braum being so tanky, it's not going to scare scare him, scare any of that damage that Lulu and Sivir will be able to provide, especially when they don't have the items. Uh, the last tier 1 turret here falling down. Kane looking like they want to go for something. Uh, not The quickness coming in, not going to be getting anything else past that. So Sivir getting her, uh, Tristana jumping out, uh, Braum jumping right to her, right following after. And it's good for them to try to be focusing the bot, but the bot is being cautious of that. But Vulcan is just keeping himself around. I really are coming down again. It's going to be just looking at that uh, kill onto the York as he falls down again at 0 and 5. Uh, Vagar doing what he can. Still trying to build up the AP. He's got, looks like, 62 to his name now. So that's good. But, uh,. Already a couple of items completed for Tulsa with this huge gold lead in their advantage, but Kane with his aggression now is a little bit too late as uh, the Hawks are not looking like they were keeping him in track. Turret plating helping a little bit out. Turret plating going to be falling down now, actually, as we reach the 14 minute mark, but good of IIT finally get that, like, one more of those ticks. They are going to be looking at a 1v1 with the Ari as she's going to be getting a lot, a nice little dodge there, but I don't think that's going to be enough for them, and that's gonna seal the deal there the glacial often actually helping out a lot to slow it down so it's kind of working in favor there rift herald gonna be falling down with irelia and elisa's aid uh gonna be put just continuing to add so much pressure as they're looking to stop tristana now gonna be looking for her dive the simmer not gonna trying to see what damage she can do but brown and Sivir are split up i don't know why iit should be committing hard for this they do get a little decent amount of damage here but um Kane now here on his end. If they can try to force it as hard as they can, no, actually, that ward's going to catch them out. They know it. He showed himself there, and they saw it. So that's going to be too little too late, I think, for them. Their ping's coming out that they know that the Kane, something's going on there. We're not going to commit for it. I really have fallen to going for another 1v1 in New York. He's essentially going to be a gold bending machine right now, apparently, for them. Elise going to be coming up here, but Kane's going on the red buff alone, and they're not there to address it. If, uh... So much pressure coming in from both sides now. As the Elise is showing herself, she's going to be walking right into that stun. I don't think she's going to have anything on there. A nice spell shield, though, to help things out. She's going to be ulting herself out. Just barely going to be getting alive. But the Rift Herald now at 3100 health is going to be knocking here at the tier at the uh, turret. Going to be doing a decent amount of damage. Getting it half chunked. Looking like I really is going to have enough damage to finish it off. The Inhib going to be lucky looking next. But only Kane and Vague are here. This, this is nice little chrono break uh excuse me the uh broken stopwatch why did it say chrono 
Uh, trying to see what they can do. There's a lot of shutdown gold here on the map. If they can get something, this can maybe help them out a little bit. One more auto. The smite actually, I believe, going to be there to help finish it off. But as they chase on, I really that's a matchup that uh, they'll gladly take as another turret falls there for uh, IIT in favor of Tulsa there. Now they're looking at the final inhib turret there. Trying to see what they can get. Ping's coming out here for IIT, but they want to be focusing their sights on Irelia instead. Okay. Interesting. Uh, leaving Delulu on her own. I don't think that's going to be enough, but she's going to take a decent amount of damage. Forcing the flash out for like 10 HP. Oh man. And that's definitely poor positioning for the Hawks. You know, Lulu recognizing that they should be trying to go for it, but trying to go against the Cyrilia, you're not going to get anything. Even with that, you, the Tristano has 800 gold and less items. Just go for that instead. It's only a difference of 200, but uh, some poor decision making though from the Hawks is going to be leading for this full day to just continue to fall in favor with 10k at 16 minutes. Not too much of a chance there for the Hawks to come back, unfortunately. So they definitely got a lot to learn from moving on to game two for sure. Um, definitely, I think they need to do a better job of having the jungler be aware, keeping the other jungler in mind. When Elise was showing herself top, forcing herself for that tier one turret here at top, Kane should have been in bottom, but instead he's going for the dragon. Uh, that's just poor uh, map awareness there. Um, mid lane matchup, not too much to comment. I think Bobby was doing what he could, but all of these roams coming in from Elise with her. And that again, that's all reliant on Vulcan to try to see if they can try to map each other out onto the board is uh, important. And then, yeah, the, uh, I think just purely mechanics-wise, Yorick versus Irelia, uh, just is something that the Hawks don't see, that, uh, J-Mars just can't seem to handle out on his own, so, uh, definitely gonna be having this be something that they're gonna have to look at focusing on. Maybe a target ban, maybe more bans contributed to the top. Uh, Bromdo and Elise gonna be pretty quick with that Cloud Drake to help look for another potential kill. Might be having to force out the Sivir. Gonna actually be forcing it out. Yep. So they don't want to take any risks to get her out to fight. Leave for themselves healthy. The Ghosty is actually gonna be catching that really. If they're gonna try to force... Ooh! The Vagar flashing for it. He wanted it so badly, but it's a little too late. Preemptively. IIT, unfortunately, though, not there to respond. Um... I really they looking for another one we wanted to figure out, forcing himself to flash out as he's kind of stuck uh, looking at this first inhib. A couple of IT members finally converging. If they can get this kill, that's 1,000 gold onto the map. First falling with the cage, going to be getting it onto the Lulu, forcing a nice knock up there actually helps it out. And that's enough of a delay to keep, uh, to get Irelia off the map there. So 1,000 gold to her name, that's going to help. And that's going to help Vagar especially. Vagar doing a good job here with his AP build, but getting the... Web shot's gonna be doing a lot of damage. Don't uh, don't think that that's not gonna be there. So IIT now having to hold the gates. Are you gonna be knocking on to the mid in hip turret? And the rotation still from IIT a little bit too slow as they're approaching all fronts. And IIT looks a little bit split up now with the top turret, top lane having the super minions come here through now, just passing through to right here in between the tier one and tier two. Excuse me, tier one and tier two. Stun not going to be landing, uh, the charm not going to be landing though as IIT are 4 man strong. Guardian going to be cropped right there. Sivir's got her ult in 24. If, uh, if they're together and like, uh, Tulsa's going to be going for like a split, uh, they might be able to CC them enough, but in a 5v5 fight, there's no way they're winning that at all, so if they're able to commit the resources for it, they might be able to get themselves onto the map, but... Sivir now, I think, yeah, about 2k behind. Baron gonna have their sights set on now as it's just spawned. Um, a Ocean Drake been spawning in two minutes, but I think that Tulsa should be confident enough to be able to take the Baron on their own. Or, if they get a cash on IIT to just close out the game, what will IIT do though? They're gonna have to start putting out division where they can. Right. As uh, Kane's looking around, but he's going to be spotted out by this ward. Keeping ourselves in mind, Kane doesn't have a... Uh, oh, oh no. 
dodge it out where he where he can, but that's gonna be too much. And the ward and the visions, he was walking on top of a pink, unfortunately. IIT denied anything past their wolf pit, actually. Uh, as they kind of split themselves up, but Vagar trying to try to see if he can poke anything out, but the Baron already at three and a half K. Looks like it's gonna be secured in their name. No one's there to contest it. Will be falling down easily enough to them. York though trying to see if he can lane himself to a little bit to catch up just to get one item built. Oh no, he's got yeah one item built. Going for the Triforce first actually. The dive coming out from there really. The E catching it out, but they're so slowed. Flash coming in from the Tristana to finish off the heal coming off as well. That's going to be two members of IT. Both of the Yordles falling down actually. Um, Sivir now with no mana, she's not going to have anything left to, for, and at this point, just a formality, the, uh, as Tulsa here is looking to close it out, Hex Tech going to be slowing them down a bit, uh, yeah, York not even breaking the 2k threshold is just too much for the Hawks to handle, unfortunately, trying to do their last bit, though, uh, so they're holding on, uh, pretty, really strong dive, and there you have it, game one, falling over here, too. Uh, in favor for University of Tulsa. The Golden Hurricane, I believe is what they're uh, called. Clip the damage charts, Elden. What do we got here? Oh, man. Yep, MVP there to die, really. Uh, Ari, you know, she had Elisa's help there, especially uh, for a couple of those ganks to just force out the summoners there from Vagar and some... Kane not really in a position where he could look for any ganks. They tried really hard to force in the bot lane, but again, that's the uh, that's just the map awareness, trying to keep track of the Elise. If they know where the Elise is, then they could look for the gank, but uh, seeing how the Braum Shield and Tristana, if they, keeping in track of those abilities are also equally important though uh, for them. Alrighty, so let's see. We can change things a little bit here. We've now got University of Tulsa on the board there with a 1-0 to start off. And this is a best of three match for those that are watching. IIT looking like they're going to be on the red side though for this game. All right, we are on our way now to game two. Uh, Tulsa in the lead here with 1-0 and o with a pretty convincing fashion uh, to uh, pretty much take over the game. Well played there from Dyrelia for a bunch of those 1v1s. J Mars definitely having a hard time to kind of find his place. Um, Vulcan Mittens just needs to uh, focus a lot more towards the jungling. And he was already behind because he had started off in the blue jungle but then went all the way to raptors didn't have someone to help him out um, bot lane sustained i think uh in a 2v2 it was only that could have been a coin toss and then mid lane yet yeah, a lot of the jungle presence there to help it out two or three ganks just led uh the game to continually snowball in their favor iit things for them that they want to be working on um definitely trying to see if they can keep the control of the map in mind uh but as we get the bands uh tulsa going for the same three bands the third band now going to be on the air for j mars and this is where we're going to be seeing is it going to be the irelia or anything that we want to be getting in mind no it will be the elise that will be getting out of the way and so irelia still being open leaves uh going to be wondering if bubble buddy if that's if that's him that was on top lane He's going to go for that. And no, that will be the Jax. So, IIT had Jax in their first tier ban, uh, first round ban last game one, but instead, uh, now having to lease out. IIT looking like they want to be prioritizing the bot lane now, so I think being aware that top lane matchup is a little bit too much for them to handle. Mid was able to sustain. Maybe we can try to see if we can force something out bot. But going for the first pick bots is, uh, you know, dangerous as well because, uh, 
if Tulsa doesn't elect to go for that, they can uh, be able to counter them pretty hard, respectively. Thresh, though, always a good uh, support solo queue champ. Um, his hook, his flay, his lantern, all really good things to start off and disengage fights. Uh, Irelia and Jack's going to be locked in for Tulsa, so that will likely be a Jack's jungle, if anything. Looking uh, like that. Banging against a Nunu Willump, though. Not sure how that matchup goes in the end. Final pick's gonna be here for the first phase will be the Oriana for Tulsa, the Valkaz there for uh, Illinois Tech. And uh, I really can dive, but diving against a full on laser beam from Valkaz is uh, not recommended. Okay. TMI, dude. <laughs> We're live. Second round of fans now coming in uh, place as IIT is going to be going for a Braum. Vladimir, of all things. Ugh, excuse me. I'm going to be taken out here from Tulsa. Likely another top band focus, but only the uh, 80s, only the marksman bot lane and the uh, top lane left, I guess, for IIT. Marksman and support. So bot lane. Yeah, Tulsa's bot lane just left out in the open. Bromchestrana? Interesting. Uh, I didn't really see them too much as a problem. Um, but it's just it seems like IIT wants to be trying to go just switch things completely up just to see what they can do. Uh, Maybe from Tulsa, we might be seeing Azreel, Zaya, I don't know. Something a little bit more backline -y. It doesn't look like they need her to be hyper-carrying the game as Tulsa seems to be confident in their lane matchups to be able to sustain themselves against IIT, especially in their top lane. The Vayne coming out. I like to see that. Um, and so she had a recent buff a couple patches ago. Hopefully that works out in their favor. And yep, safe champions. I almost forgot about the Caitlyn, the most notable of them all. Gonna be just snippering from the back line. Doesn't really need any strong engage. The Morgana gonna be picked out here, and that's definitely good uh, for against a uh, Thresh Vayne matchup. It's actually, I think that's considered a counter, uh, technically. The uh, Poppy though gonna be here for the top lane. That's playable. Uh, you can match against that for Irelia's dive, Jax's dive. Uh, those are all... That's all the line on her W, though. So, the minute that she doesn't have that, J uh, she'll have her ult, which could help. But, um... Likely not going to be seeing a kill v. kill uh, matchup, as I think Mars 9 has now got the idea that he can't likely look for the 1v1 hard engage. But hey, who knows? Maybe he's got something up his sleeve to show up. Uh, for this game, so uh, keeping ourselves in mind, T's Tulsa are going to be going for the three eight nights again. They just want to be looking forward to win early. IIT though, going to be having Poppy on the top. I didn't really see her use any teleports in the team fighting wise. I think it was just to get the lane, so it didn't seem to work out too much in her favor. Uh, Morgana with Ignite, that's natural. Exhaust, yeah, that's good on Caitlyn, I guess, if you can get the range on her. Uh, Cleanse actually being swapped out for the barrier here for Velkaz, but we're going to be taking ourselves now into a spectate delay. Uh, we'll take a quick break when we come back. Game two of the uh, Illinois Tech League of Legends Division 3 team against the Golden Hurricanes. Thanks.
All right. We are good with the spectator delay now as we wind down the clock. We're going to get ourselves now into game three. Switch out the screens a bit. Uh, Tulsa will be on the blue side. IIT will be on the red, so we can switch those icons a bit. Um, and I think we are good to go. Nice. Alrighty. Ooh. Yeah, keeping ourselves in mind of what we've got here. Uh, three ignites there for Tulsa again. The barrier coming out here for uh, Velkaz. Grasp for J Mars. That's fine. Airy Morgana expected. Airy Oriana also expected. Yeah, that glacial. I was uh, that glacial augment uh, on the R that we saw game one. I was uh, pleasantly surprised by how well that ended up working. Um, Yeah, this is a uh, bot lane 2v2 matchup. It's all relying on who gets level 2 first. Uh, if the Morgana gets a nasty bind and Caitlyn's just able to put everything on top of trap, headshots, then that vein's just going to be shut down entirely. Uh, respectively, if uh, Devane's going to be able to dodge herself out of that, she's got the Q. Uh, and Thresh is going to be landing some nasty hooks, then uh, the game can fall in their favor. All depends, right? I think Tulsa's probably going to try to see... going to be... Keeping their eyes probably the closest on the Thresh to map her out. Um, but it's going to be important for the Thresh definitely to not sacrifice too much damage on his end. Uh, taking a bunch of Kate headshots and Morgana black pulls to the face. And so we're going to be on the Rift now. IIT backs to the wall. Going to have to be forcing out a win here in order to get us into a game three. The Nunu Willow coming out here for Vulcan Mittens is going to be something to keep in mind. IIT though, going for a 3-4 man invade. They're going to be seeing what's going on. A nice little Morgana bind to halt any more pushing from them. The Valkas throwing one out there. Uh, blind, not going to be connecting with anybody, but... Uh... Oh, excuse me. Looking like everyone's just going to walk away just fine. Oh yeah, have to put this up. Looking like we're going to be expecting a much more traditional uh, type of fighting, uh, excuse me, traditional type of uh, jungling than we see, uh, than we saw in uh, game one with Kane taking the scenic route. We're going to have the bot lane helping out their respective buffs on the uh, bottom side here. You're going to be munching on that soon. There it goes. Going to be going for Rump, looks like. Uh, oh, nice ward there. We'll be able to see who's going to be coming out first. But actually, IIT's one is going to be expiring pretty soon. So, uh, hopefully that's okay. Oh, the bind actually going to end up landing onto uh, the vein at the last particle, it looked like. I don't know if that ward connected. I don't think it did. That's unlucky. Um, Thresh with his Ancient Corn going to be collecting uh, the mana and the gold to help it out a little bit. But uh, 1v1 here with Bubbly Buddy against J Mars is already having him start off at a little bit of a disadvantage. And I hope he's going to have the good patience to hold himself on. Trying her best with her mighty hammer to swing away to victory. Okay. Uh, Jack's going to be going for the scuttle on his end. I t Willem, though, finishing up his own scuttle there. Uh, and there we go. Jack's level 3. Nudu should be level 3 after this. There he goes. Threshold doesn't look like it's connecting. Already had to use one pot. And yeah. Looking like Tulsa coming out a little bit ahead on their laning phase here in the bot lane. Bobby going to be looking for any kind of 1v1s. Oh. Oh? Oh, 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 man, I think Grasp came to him, but the Ignite is too much, and then coupled with a bunch of minions, but 
a much closer 1v1 that we saw earlier. Uh, Nunu going to be taking the Raptors alone here. I don't know if they know if he knows that's actually what's up. And Jax will win against this 100%. I don't know. I do not know. I'm scared for Vulcan Mittens here. Red buff going to be taken down to 500. I think it's just one smite away. Ooh, and that will go over to Vulcan. Nice job there for him, for him to have that smite available. And to keep Jax in mind. Get out of my jungle, kid. Uh, Vando, Morgana putting a little bit of vision out there, leaving the Caitlyn a little bit to her own. But again, this is the map awareness that we need uh, IIT to pick up. Nice little dodger to avoid. Morgana as a champion is a very, it's it's actually very mana reliant and more that you don't see it. Gonna be starting to gank from Will of Doe. IIT looking like they want to engage. Could we be seeing a flash? No. Nududu not having his a nice spell shield to keep it in mind. I had to look like I want to commit hard for this, but the, the condemn actually not going to be enough. It's not enough for the Hawks. The, the, the condemn did not get her to the wall, but forcing out both summoners uh, from Caitlyn does help things out. The Ignite going over to the Thresh. A lot of things committed. Aurelia. Not. Landing to stun, but Jax's will. That'll help. IIT now ready to kind of be on the front line. And Morgana doesn't have much mana left. That's only enough for like a Q and an E. That's it. They want to look like they want to fight though. Ooh, the not landing. Ooh, no. But Pilates is going to be falling to that. One more auto could do it. She wants it. Nice play there from Pirate Windows to get it out. And to finally trade for the ADCs. That's worth it in my book. Because First Blood had already fallen down to the Poppy. So Bane needs it. She'll be able to push down this wave one more. And she'll be likely maybe a 6 CS lead if she's able to do it quickly enough. Poppy though looking for another 1v1. She wants it so badly but it's not enough. The matchup still being too strong for her to be able to handle on her own. And yeah, I think at this point we just IIT definitely needs to respect Dyrelia. It's just at this point, it's not worth it for the jungle to come over at all. Just try to have Poppy get at least the XP, play it safe in the tower as long as she can, get to level six if she can. Um, but if they can put maybe some cautionary wards out on the river entrances, just in case Jax is looking to dominate that area, uh, they should be ready for that. Pretty big wave here coming in for Oriana, but hopefully she'll be able to farm it safely enough. Gonna be leaving her with about a 10 CS lead, but Jax here coming up and he doesn't have any abilities. Level 6 Oriana, gonna be connecting the Ignite coming here to secure the deal. And well played for Jax, and weren't we just talking about river warding? Exactly. This entrance right here, you need to keep that in mind. You need to keep that in mind 100%. Good on Velkos to have it here, but traditionally, the jungler should always be in charge of putting the w division ward there. Actually, I can ping it here, 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 or here. Those are like the four jungler prime spots. But Tulsa going to be looking at that early drag level four. Gen no, and another one v one falling down for the poppy. That's unfortunate. Uh, four man dragon. Uh, they're committed for the first dragon on the map gonna be an ocean which will definitely help work out a little bit with the sustain and they're looking to continue to press their advantage poppy's not gonna be there at all i mean excuse me new news not gonna be there all oh, that'll be a blue buff that will be going straight to the ori and that looks like another uh commitment Oof. the thresh gonna be knocked down really low and he doesn't have any uh pots to actually help him on his way but right after the blue buff we have a vein that's about to be walking right into a map but no level six why are you don't take the lantern oh oh he wants it so badly. I think they'll get the. They will get the jacks. So a good trade there. Well played by the thresh to be able to get the hook. I want to see what happened with the interaction though. I think vein e and then thresh e. One more time. Okay, it looks like the thresh. Yeah, it didn't land, but good on vein to barely dodge that Morgana Q actually. The turret gonna be getting two shots on him to get it down though. All right, all right, all right. Whew. Well, IIT needs these small trades, you know. It's mostly misplays on Tulsa's side, and but at least IIT is able to capitalize on them, thankfully. 
Um, Ori, you know, having spent a lot of time in the bot lane, is going to be letting this mid lane push a little bit. If someone's there to collect the CS or to, or to experience for it, that'll help things a little bit to continue those leads, right? That's what uh, the team needs to be able to do. But Velkai is going to be going for that control work, getting a little bit of gold on his end. Leave Division Warding to Nunu, you know, you gotta be able to try to match it up, but no, there is Velkaz being able to clear it out to, to ward himself as the lane will reset shortly. Uh, keeping ourselves in Division Mind, Nunu's not gonna have a snowball for the blue buff, but he hit will have one for the crop, but I don't think they want that. They want to just be forcing for the bot lane again. No Vision there is gonna be having the Morgana maybe be walking up pretty darn soon. IIT wants it. They're ready to go. The, a lot of a lot of abilities missing there for them, but Main wants to go all in. Oh god. Oh my lord. Dude just straight diving in there with his snowball. He's gonna be running over. Uh yes, level six, maybe. Uh, he didn't channel it. Or did he? I don't think he did at all, but Velkaz taking the brunt of that damage allows you to just be able to roll in safely, which is good. Um, I Poppy there, gonna have her TP in a little bit, but again, uh, just in a state of sustain at this point, play for the long con, uh, try to do what she can just to be able to see us safely in the turret, get in a nice couple minions there. Transitioning now a little bit out of the early phase turret plating gonna be having about four or five minutes left in a marker One more tick will be able to get it. That's one tick left of the turret Nice little W to stop the Irelia, but that's a lot of damage the Q gonna help a little bit in slowing the W coming out Irelia's greeting right here. She's focusing really hard and trying to look to get the kill on Poppy if Nunu has Wants to beat her to help it out that could be able to maybe Kill her under IIT's tower though. No way in a lane situation that they'll win at all. Thresh gonna be back in here. A couple of items keeping ourselves in mind is uh Devane here finally coming out here with a slight lead of her own with 300 gold to her name. Uh new, new snowball gonna be slowly making its way, but the ultimate will just stop him right in his tracks. Bot lane's pushed up respectively on its own. Trying to do what they can. Bane, you know, early game, always been relatively atrocious, but uh, Ping's coming out as they are able to keep that in mind. Ooh, oh, what? <laughs> uh, Caitlyn not wanting to take any chances, not trusting to work out a black shield, I guess. Uh, that's unlucky. Or, well, in favor for IIT, dude. What, what am I? I'm not a traitor. Uh, we're gonna be seeing the Rift Herald fall down though now as the Irelia and Jax got that synergy built up. Um, yeah, Irelia already showing signs of a little bit of dominance with the uh, 2k lead. Not as significant as we saw in 10 minutes. I think 10 minutes it was like 4 or 5k was like ridiculous, but not as uh, of a stomp, I guess, as stompy as we saw though. Important to note, I really, Poppy being level 6 still helps things out a bit. If it gets really to that last minute desperation, she can ult it out. I think she could even look at ulting out the Rift Herald if I really is going to be trying to initiate it. Nice little dodge there to get herself out. A lot of, a lot of armor, the ninja tabbies, the cloth. They're going to see the Jax coming over, but it's IIT wanting to commit for this. The, uh, they are looking like they're going to commit for this dive eventually. The Rift Herald is going to be spawning out right now. INT though, not really in its sorts. Thresh kind of hovering around the wolves. Uh, and I Poppy going to be pinched now as she has to look to get herself out. Going to be starting off with the W, forcing the flash, but that's a bad, that's a bad uh, ab ability level. Uh, like ability initiation, excuse me. But... IIT now with the knowledge that their jungler is topside might want to be taking a look at this drag. Velka's going in hard against this Irelia. The ultimate is going to be landing. That barrier nicely done there to hold it out in place. But the snipe is going to be too much though for them. And the Hawks aren't there to respond. They are not there. Too much damage though. Forcing the flash out. Going to help it out. Bane wanting to go for the 1v1. A lot of abilities used though for for uh, the Hawks, for T Tulsa, and it's gonna let Vayne maybe turn herself on. The Ignite coming in to find, not landing as well. That's gonna let the Vayne keep living, but it's gonna be the Nunu that ends up falling down at the end. 
Bane turned it on a little bit. I like it. Pirate Windows ready to go for those for that all in. He knows, or at least hopefully the team related information of those abilities are down. Does a couple nice tumbles to get himself out of that sticky situation with the Morgana. Morgana herself <laughs> just goes for the stopwatch when Bane had her sights on Caitlyn. So it's like, uh, now it's just 1v1 instead of uh, 1v2. But, um, trying to see what we can do. Yeah, bot lane just continuing to push a little bit of a lead. Not as significant as top lane. But the uh, Velkaz himself not doing too hot on his own, unfortunately. I think his matchup 1v1 against the Ari wasn't bad, it was because of the jungler, but in terms of 1v1 against the mid lane, Oriana's gonna be stacking up a couple of items that's gonna be helping out. And she is one of those 5v5 champs, so she is gonna be great in team fights. Velkaz equally, you know, he's also really good if he has as long as he has a team protect him, you know. Bork gonna be finished here for the vein. She's gonna be nice and sturdy for those fights, but I think uh, Tulsa might be wanting to be looking at uh, turning down that ego just a little bit to tune it down. Nice little bind there to get the Velkos another stun. Nothing left for you to do, sorry. Uh, kill going over to really though, so that's kind of good. Having the kills not go to Caitlyn will help make it so that the gold shift is focused towards one end. But having the mid lane open now and just a little bit under, a little over 1k health is going to likely just fall down itself. Pink's coming out as they are able to spot the Nunu. Nothing they can do. Vayne trying to do what she can on her own to capture as much XP. But they're going to be starting to set up their, Tulsa's going to be setting up their own vision control to catch this second drag of the game. A now a mountain. And that'll help especially uh, with the uh, securing these last few tier 1 turrets, a couple of these tier 2s, and then maybe the Baron, uh, another early Baron coming out, but sorry about that, IIT already gonna, so, gonna be starting off a fight, Bane trying to do what she can, focusing herself on the Orianna, they want this, but Velkan is gonna zone them out actually, I think IIT comes out this fight, the, getting a nice knockup, all that's left here is the Jax, Wow, okay, let's replay that, because that was spicy, and I was just speculating random stuff about mountain dragons. Excuse me. Okay, dragon gonna be taken down to about 3k health here. Thresh gonna be looking for the hooks. IIT's team finally ready to converge. The Jax is here first. Thresh just going in on his own. Gonna be starting to ult off, but IIT is wanting to secure this on their own. The sh shockwave gonna be landing there for three. No one's focusing on the vein yet, though. Oriana isolated, Poppy keeping them at bay with the knockup. Thresh there, gonna be falling down eventually. But now Velkos ult splits the fight. IIT, uh, Tulsa can't move anywhere past this. Focusing it all on two. Yeah, the Ori. So, a lot of members of them split up. Nice little knockup there. Another tumble there for the Vayne to get it out of range. And yeah, IIT comes out on top. They've got still so, got some fight on them. Well played from the Hawks there. Uh, definitely a, a complete, there's some shutdown gold in mind, 900 there for the Irelia, so that's gonna help it out, and that goes on to the Vayne. This is Vayne's game, dude. Pirate Windows is ready. He's, he's like, I'm done playing Sivir. I'm done being passive. Give me off the spell shield. I'm just R-inning. I'm R-flashing. That's the kind of progression that I like to see from ADCs. You're gonna be munching on that tower a little bit. Uh, but looking like IIT is going to be able to secure this first tower, and I don't think uh, their members are ready to take it on yet. Getting another munch out there. Uh, yep, they're going to just get their way on their way out, and that will help slow the game down a little bit. Poppy helps in terms of the CC. She helps with her W. She helps keep them in place. Um... Uh, okay, anyone else see that? Looking like Tulsa's, uh, DC'd. I don't know if he de I don't think he DC'd the Dragon Pit. No. It, well, that was definitely just a 5v5 that IIT did really well on. Um. Alright, we're good. Or not. Yes, we are. Uh, a little bit of freezing there. A little bit of a lane switch that we got going on. So, IIT now is going to be having, uh, excuse me, Tulsa. So I really are going to be looking at the bot lane now. Uh, Oriana finishing up that blue, probably going to be keeping herself mid with the Vel. How is IT going to transition into this? 
they see that Irelia, are they going to be able to respond in kind? Do they want to be keeping the Poppy on Irelia duty? Thresh V Vayne, you can now play that. Poppy V Morgana Kate, eh, not as much. It, that's definitely harder, but I think if IIT is able to not make... as, as I think their best bet is to try to just make the Kate as useless as possible. Like, if, as long as IIT has the armor in mind, if they can be able to not get any, like, get completely wailed on by a, an Orianna Shockwave, they can maybe keep themselves into the game. Vayne now, level 10, she's going to have, yeah, a nice 2.5k gold lead to her name. She's going to have those core items, but IIT wants to fight, it looks like. Getting a nice little uh, plant out of the way. But Ping's coming out as Velkaz is going to be having to hold himself here for this tier 2. But the wave clear potential that he has is going to deter Tulsa from looking for anything more. And uh, please tell me that Nidu has... Nope, no lens. Uh, mission score... Thresh doing his work there with a nice double the amount of... Uh, keeping that in mind. But Thresh with his Mobies, he might be wanting to look for something... Get into Flay first, but it's going to be important that you can E him out. No, he's going to actually fall down. Nice condemn. Well played with that flash, actually. Okay, I saw that. I 100% saw that. So Vayne gets caught in it, but she gets the ability off anyway. It's actually really well played. Okay. Flay first. Throw in the ult, right? Starts with her ult. It does get her. The W misses out. One auto, get to ignite. Two auto and one more will do it yeah okay well played no it's good it's really good actually because i he gets to condemn and then flashes i believe i'm gonna watch it one more time it's really good this vein is pirate windows is not messing around game two for sure okay one two how does how does she do it? Oh, okay, okay. So I really accuse, I really accuse, and it goes behind her, and the E goes also a pinch to the wall. Okay, I, was, I thought the, the pirate just like went nuts and flashed preemptively to just get it, but I guess it kind of works in favor of them in the end. Like, if Vayne did not get that condemn, she might have died. I think, cause yeah, Vayne is really big, even with the tri just with the team at Triforce to be enough. Um, and that'll help a little bit, you know, that's going to let Poppy catch up a little bit in gold again. The, the gold lead, not ridiculous. And Poppy can fight against Jax 1v1. That's, that is that is that is a top lane matchup that can happen. And it's really good, actually, if she's able to get land her CC with her W and he, her E to prevent Jax from doing anything. Uh, Blast Plant going to be getting them over here for the top lane. As IT kind of converges, they're going to need a lens to keep themselves in mind of what's going on. Pirate Windows going to be having the Ginsu's now on his name. That's going to help as well. But um, Thresh going to be doing a little bit of warding duty of his own. Going to go for the first bushes. Only going to be spying out one word. And yeah, that's all that's left here. So no vision here for uh, Tulsa inside uh, IIT's red. But I really continue to just look to, for that split push. No one there to match her really yet. Poppy really doesn't want to be committing herself for that it looks like so they want iit looking like they want to transition but they need to have the they need to keep in mind what objectives that they want in the mind to keep in mind because uh iit has the wave clear they don't have split push advantages so if they can look for good fights if they can look for good engages that's what will be keeping them in the game uh, Jax, though, he's going to be looking for his own split push top, and that's likely looking like IIT can't do anything more. Um, five couple members roaming down for this dragon. Might be having another big uh, fight coming up soon, and hopefully it's falling in IIT's favor. Only 3k gold behind here at 20 minutes in, so still have a breath of life in them. Jax, though, going to be showing himself. So the jungler here in the top lane, can IIT take this fight 5v4? I don't know. I really no vision of I really as she's hovering around here on this bush. They're gonna be taking a bunch of damage. Uh, I really gonna finally be showing yourself, but I don't think IIT is ready for it. They can't handle that Jax. Our Poppy going to be the first to back just to be able to turn to Jax, and that'll be kind of securing the Mountain Drake for her. Not enough forceful engage. 
Oriana barely nabs so, uh, that blue buff. Going over to Belkaz, thankfully. Um, 2k, 14k. No smites to finish it off, but enough to uh, enough with the trap line uh, and the jack split push to throw off the Hawks from that. So pacing still kind of being uh, Tulsa that's putting their foot forward. Vayne with her two items is still advantageous above to Caitlyn, who only has one and a half bet left. So. Pings are coming out now for Baron as Tulsa has their sights set on it. Two Mountain Drakes and the Ocean is there. They're going to see themselves clear out that Vision Ward. Uh, the Hawks though not really there for it and too much lane pressure is there to uh, have them really be doing anything. So no kills have been going over. I Tulsa just wants to be fighting the game in macro. They can out macro the Hawks here because they I, I think they get the feeling that this is Vayne's game so we just need to just not have Vayne in there. And the only way to not have Vayne in there is just not fight. So they can control the vision, choke out the vision pressure, push out the lanes, force I to address those situations. And that's how they'll get their Baron. But again, look at this. Vayne's all the way back in base. She has, I think she's going for Frozen Mallet. I don't know. Jarm's Fist, what else that builds into. I'm pretty sure that's Frozen Mallet and... Uh, Not Black Cleaver. I don't know. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's Bowser Mallet is what she's going for, though. Thresh going to be looking for his own. Going to be caught up by the uh, Aurelia, though. And again, high IT slacking there. This is where the past... Uh, the past four minutes have been no kills. It's just all objectives. A tower, a drake, a baron now. Falling over here for Tulsa is going to let them just control the game pace. They want to look for something, though. They want to try something. Morgana going to be left into the, the hook, not connecting. IT unable to force much out past that, but can they look towards the tier 2? I think IT just has to try their best to, do, to force out the situation because they can't win against a split game, I don't think. Poppy's still too behind to be able to handle out on her own, I think. She's got the Sunfire Cape, though. Uh, that'll help a little bit. But not many turrets left. Inhib, top, exposed, tier 2, left for mid, already about halfway there. And I really is going to just be that everlasting presence. If, uh, if IIT wants to get something done, they've got to either force to fight mid and be confident, or... And, and in order to do that, they need to be able to choke out Tulsa's vision in their own jungle, right? If they don't know where they're coming from, they'll just continue to split push. But if they see five just and they're not prepared for it, then what can you do about it, right? But every time that IIT has been looking at something like that, Tulsa's been having decent vision control. Anything past their river to be, just be able to smash the Hawks. Um, Baron and Ocean going to be keeping those members topped off. We're about halfway with the Baron buff gone. And again, this is where IIT has to be able to hold the line. Can they handle the aggression from a 1-3-1 approach from the uh, from Tulsa? It's a little bit too much, but looking like IIT wants to commit for the Jax. The Jax is just instantly going to boot, get himself right out. I'm not going for it. No. Or maybe. Nunu is significantly behind by two levels. I don't know if you're going to win that 1v1. Going for the smite, but looks like they want it. Can they trade it out? Bane's going to be going for it. She's got the red buff on her. Can she keep up with her? Her passive doing work here. Forcing the flash out for it. Jax, nice play there. Getting a munch on that. I, Vayne's going to have to try to force out the 1v3. She's trying her darndest. But I don't think it's enough. The shockwave going to be falling in. Oh my god. She tried. She tried. But Velkaz was too low earlier. I think from an earlier skirmish to be able to help out unfortunately. And uh, unfortunately that death is going to lead to some shutdown going for to Caitlyn. So Caitlyn will get herself right back onto the map. She's been in the meanwhile farming steadily on her own. Uh... Now, not too much of a deficit, but 
couple of members trying to throw out some hooks, throw out some abilities to see if they can get any catches. IIT will hold. A little bit worse for wear, I think, uh, after that Baron having the uh, tower fall uh, and one or two kills will give, you know, maybe 3-4k gold of an advantage here. The game's not completely finished yet, though. You know, if I, if, if, if if they're if our main damage if IIT's main damage sources can get their two three items all right I was right frozen melon woo all right I still know my League of Legends uh if if they can try to if they can just play until the point where they can take fights five v five they might have a chance but I think in this objective game just too much prep work from Tulsa the pacing is just too much in their favor uh Caitlyn no can they get the miracle hook no force it to flash out. So having that Summoners in mind will help the Hawks a little, a little bit. That can maybe deter Kate from going for any uh, flashier engages or kind of in your face engages being confident. So she, IT should be keeping that in track. Vayne going to be slowly coming over to the mid lane. She's got three items. Yeah, she's so much ahead. Two and a half, 2.2k. You know, she's got more gold than I really have. So that's when you know this vein hurts. That's when you know. It's all in the objective plays. IIT needs to put their resources towards pirate. They need to be able to have the uh, discipline to last through the split push. Putting Poppy on that duty, Poppy will continue to just gain armor. She's a meat shield. She's going to be taking those 50k autos to the face. She's going to be the one that's going to be battering already Oriana halfway across the rift. That's how IIT needs to be able to win. And, and having that W to make sure that I really and Jazz cannot dive upon our core vein. Uh, win condition is there. Win condition is there. They need to find it, though. Looking at the 1v1, though. Poppy versus Irelia. Poppy's ready, though, this time. She's got the armor. Irelia's looking a little bit worse for wear. Well, relatively speaking, anyway. Uh... Six K for Dragons there to Tulsa's favor as they need to start looking. IIT is going to be slowly starting to push their way, forcing the fight for the Poppy. Is she going to be getting her flash out? But looking like Vayne's going to be committing for this one v one. I think she'll get killed just fine. A nice little kill there going over to Pirate as he continues to his dominance here in the bot lane with his performance. Uh, excuse me, in the in this top in hip with his performance, dominant bot lane performance. I would say, yeah. Getting some nice outplays with a cup with some help from Plelates there for that two v two, but you know it's it's uh I think that's what I think Tulsa knew that when they went for their picks and bans. I think game one that they had gone for a thresh ban, um, so they know what Plelates is capable of doing it, and it's all a matter of who are we going to give what, right? We can't outban everyone, so can uh, can having the advantage here for the bot side keep the Hawks in the game? I don't know. The Shockwave, though, going to be landing there. Doing a lot of damage, though. It's going to be leaving the Oriana exposed. Going to be forcing the stopwatch there. Going to be an inevitability. The Morgana going to be landing a uh, nice bind there. But we got Baron live now. 4v4 situation. No mid lane for Tulsa. No support for Thresh. Nunu with no ult of his own. He's got he used that in the Oriana fight. It's definitely gonna be important. Gonna try to see if they can mash out the engage, but they look like they want to go for something. Nunu gonna be taking a lot of damage though. Forcing the Iroh to fight. Our Belkaz without his ult, they're too die. They died too hard for it. Looking like what they can do to get themselves out the Belkaz slow gonna be helping out a little bit. The cool. That, that'll be enough to hold off. So, yeah, IIT's dive, trying with the new to trying with the poppy. Keep the members at bay. I spoke too soon. No, I really will walk away. Caitlyn just going to be willing away at this barrier. It looks like it will be secured for them. Yeah, it's, um, IIT's backline just had no access to the damage. The Jax was closing them off. They were too scared to approach with that stun. I really weren't, wasn't able to get herself out of the fight. Those are the fights where you need to initiate with poppy as, like, her main ultimate. If they're just starting to fight... Put it on the new first and then just instantly ult them out and then go for the dive. That's much more coordinated instead of going for a full-on 4v4. Again, the team fighting is important. 
for IIT to be able to isolate certain members away from that fight. If all five members have the, uh, like, the ability to get into the fight however they need to, then they'll, that's their win condition. But, uh, Ward's gonna be spotted. I think they know that the Krugs or something's going on. Uh, Jack's gonna be walking right back out, though. He'll be fine. Another dragon here. Wait, hold on. Poppy looking at a little bit of a 1v1 on her own. Gonna be using it to get that really out of the game, but that's gonna be uh, penalizing because that's about a two minute cooldown. As the final Drake, I believe, is gonna be spawning now. Another ocean. So, three mountains, three oceans. That's gonna help for your objectives and your sustain, which is both great things for, uh, for them. With the split push for sustain, with the mountain Drake for those split push objectives. Man, RNG, dude. Jack's gonna be able to secure that no problem at all. Thankfully, going over weight. Uh, that went to the Poppy and not to the Velkaz. That's unlucky. Velkaz definitely would have wanted that. IIT looking like they want to go for an engage of their own, but Vayne being left her own her own devices against Irelia is dangerous. I would say she can do it, but uh. It's all on how, how it ends up working out. Poppy, though, going to be here to help things out. Forcing the flash out. No, the uh, E going to be forcing her out. That's not enough damage to follow through. Three members already here in the top lane. I, Tulsa just going to be pushing out for the objectives, playing out the game, forcing IIT to make bad decisions. I really now just going to be delaying the new new. Likely not going to be able to get back. She's going to be walking herself out. And we might have a fight coming up here for this last inhib turret. Uh, yeah, the last inhib turret. Mid has fallen down. Mid inhib has fallen down. One more to go. Baron buff still keeping the members pretty topped off. Ocean Drake will do that too. Looking like they want to force as hard as they can. Flash engage? No? Getting a nice knock up there, but... Some damage there falling. Shockwave gonna be landing onto the vein, and that's gonna be... The vein instantly falling. No damage from the Valkos until now. Forcing him to flash out. Trying to hold those numbers at bay, but the Velkos is too healthy. I was the Jax is too healthy to get himself out to for them to be able to do anything about it. And Poppy in the meanwhile was not there that entire time facing with that really 1v1. So unfortunately, Nunu dying a little bit too early, getting caught by some K traps with that initiation was too much for them to handle. First Nexus turret gonna be falling, another Nexus turret falling. I think that's gonna be game for the Hawks. Poppy trying to do what she can, but no. That will take us to the end of uh, the series then. Well played from Tulsa GG's to them. Um, yeah, just uh, really good macro ability um, at that 20, 18 minute mark. Yeah, after this kill on Dyrelia that I was like fantasizing over with this bot lane here, they like re regrouped themselves, figured out like, hey, I can't... Uh, Maybe we shouldn't like just go this ham because IIT's bot lane is very competent at doing what they need to do. And our Kate's behind, so we just gotta just play the game slower, put the leads where we need to. Um, focus Kate on looking at the objectives, focus on looking her at the towers, at the Baron. Yeah, just well played overall from the for Tulsa in their ability to adapt. Well played for the Hawks though, as well as they were able to kind of have a much more Impressive performance game too, you know, um, Poppy not giving over, uh, top J Mars not giving over as many kills as we saw, um, Vayne having her moments with a 850 bounty to her head, um, yeah, Nunu just, uh, uh, trying to do what he can for some of those objectives, the pacing, though, definitely seemed like, uh, Jax had his foot on the pedal to be able to be there for those main objectives, and Nunu was not, um, I, and, and that kind of depends on the ability for IIT's team to be able to respond to that. Looking like Vayne and Thresh just wanted to be confident with that 2v2, but then Nunu kind of isolated because he can't look to help out the Irelia, uh, excuse me, to help out the Poppy against that in that 1v2 situation because of her lead. So, and Oriana has enough cutting for days to be able to keep them out. So Nunu kind of just having to force himself to go for camps the entire game uh, seems to be like maybe a potential could have been a different more maybe more of an engaged type jungler instead of more of that passive approach um maybe hecarim i don't know definitely options yeah i'll just say definitely options but 
Let's take a quick look at the damage charts. Um, that'll have us uh, with the 2 0 coming out here for uh, the Hawks. Uh, 2 0 coming out here for Tulsa, excuse me. But with the uh, damage graphs, yeah. Vayne did work. For those kills in the bot lane. But yeah. After that 20-ish minute phase. When. They didn't want to look for any kills. And after the. Main objectives. The Baron. The tier 2 turrets. The jack split push. Just let them. Take that lead back. Uh, to where they needed to in the fight. Velka is trying to do what he can. But he's. One of his positioning things. Is that he has to usually wait for the team the opposing team to commit incorrectly before he can lay waste to them or uh, just because of the range of his abilities um a couple of poor initiations from the new new with good kiting abilities from tulsa just let them uh, be able to take the victory uh in the end though but that will do it for us i believe uh with this in mind, IIT gets moved to the losers bracket in this double, I believe, double elim format. But we'll confirm that uh, next week if we do another cast. But until then, I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, be sure, definitely appreciate uh, those that came out to watch the stream. If you did, be sure to follow Illinois Tech Esports on all of our social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Discord. And until then, uh, this is Elvin Moy signing off. Thanks, everyone.